Yo. <laughs> Come on, bro. I mean, time is of the essence, my guy. I'm not even set up yet, dude. <laughs> you can't just start with me like this, bro. I was so excited about this whole thing, bro. I've been waiting for like months for this day, dude. Because, oh, oh. oh my goodness. <sighs> dude, am I on time? Bro, it's like 5.30 a.m. right now, bro. Let's go. It's like 5.30 a.m., bro. I haven't been up at this time in such a long time because it's been a long time since I went on safari. <laughs> because, like, you know, I saw how you were dressed today, bro. I'm so excited. You hear that, Tim? I think I just heard a, a wild dog from the east. Here, it's pretty loud. <laughs> He's going off. Damn, dude. Tell me about this uh, this swag you got going on today, yeah, bro. Because let's be honest, dude. It feels like uh, we are about to embark on the most incredible safari journey of our lives. I'm ready. I came with water, dude. I put sunscreen on. I got ready, you know, because I know sitting in the car being driven by you all day, my butt is going to be raw by the end of the day, bro. I'm like, what hey, am I even going to hold on, bro? <laughs> Oh man, you said safari guy. Uh huh. Like Steve Irwin type. Is it because of khakis, bro? <laughs> it's the khakis, isn't it? Steve <laughs> Irwin? Steve Irwin, man. Damn, dude. What'd you do with your own uh, real life uh, Animal Planet TV show? Oh man, we'd be like Zubumafu. You ever, seen, <laughs> what? Whoa, dude. you ever see that? Damn. He like goes out to like aquariums and he's out in the he's out in the wild and he just kind of aquariums. Okay, yeah, he's in aquariums sometimes. Talking about like some sea life, <laughs> it's very interesting. But yeah, it's a, it's a boomer food. I feel like that dude. Wow. Well, dude, let's crack on, dude. Welcome to Yo. the seventh. Is it the sixth or the seventh episode of Wild PSI that we've ever Yo, done? We made it. My name is Jono. My name is Tim. And this is the hottest podcast to hit the waves in 2024. <laughs> Guys, it's great to be back. Hello, Dream Makers. We're coming at you from a chilly morning here in TV Safaris. We're about to embark. I told Tim before this, I'm going to be ripping him today. Guys, please welcome the band led by the unstoppable Herbie Cock. Let's go. On the keys, we've got Thelonious Funk on the roads. Love to see it. We have Art Flakey on the drums, Taco Pastorius on the bass, and the unstoppable Joe Fail on the guitar. But I don't know if these guys can keep <laughs> up with us today, bro, because did you guys get the brief? Did you? You didn't get the brief? Guys, yo, they're, they're pretty mad about that coffee situation, bro. <laughs> guys, we gotta, we gotta step it up. We got better coffee today. Did you read the briefs before you came inside? You didn't read the briefs. Oh, you, we're going on safari today. You guys need to play African music today. Not this other stuff. Please. I've been... Thank you. Okay, more of the vibe. More of the vibe. Yes. Now we're in Africa. This guy's got groove. TV. <laughs> Welcome to the African safari, dude. We're out here. Damn, I'm just picturing right now what your Land Rover whip would <laughs> look like in a safari. Bro, those animals would be so scared, bro, the way that thing would be bumping around, bro. Wouldn't last, dude. They can't play music in the wild, bro. What are you going to be bumping to? People are going to be wearing headphones inside the whip, dude. That speed kills giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a giraffe in real life before? I have. Wow. They're pretty tall. Pretty tall, tall than I was expecting. <sighs> something. I just heard the dreaded sound. I did. Ooh. That was that <sighs> one, isn't it? You hate to see a TV. Uh -huh. We're getting into it. <sighs> You're going to block my... Which camera are you blocking? You hate to see a TV. The safari is off to a terrible start. We've got to put gas in the truck, y'all. Everybody pay up another 50 bucks so we can fill up the truck. Well, this is just standard procedure, you know? And it's only going to gas money. Just leeching us dry. I'm trying to figure out what we're even going to see in the East TV. Like, where is this? Where is this safari taking us? Honestly, bro, I've actually come up with an awesome TV show, which I think we really need to do. Oh, you get your rubbish together over here. I had an epiphany. Tim... Something about Tim Buff Safaris, where we basically go. <sighs> <laughs> Killing my flow here. We're bro. back. We're back. We're back. All right. <sighs> you we're, said. We're going to make a show. Uh huh. Where we're going to call it Tim Safaris, where you dress up like this in your safari outfit in the khakis. Sorry, khakis. Khakis. 
make sure you understand me. <laughs> and we go around Los Angeles and we make a documentary about things we see in wild Los Angeles. And we call it Tim Safaris. And we just go around LA. And you're like, here we are. <laughs> on Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. Where we see a tweaker. <laughs> in their natural habitat. Oh man, we just be just super raw about it, bro. <laughs> That's what we see, yeah. Jungle of LA. Come on. Dude, we gotta give the people what they want, bro. I feel like the people <laughs> need some good old Los Angeles safari contents, bro. You know what I mean? If you wanna be Steve Owen, because those are those are <laughs> those are big shoes to pull, bro. That means Oh dude, man. Can you even swim, bro? Like if we went scuba diving and you had to go down into the deepest depths of the ocean and there was a stingray, how would you fare? Because I wouldn't fare, bro. Like I have no interest in like swimming in the deeps of the ocean. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good with the ocean. You can swim I, I, like a like I'm pretty good on it actually. Like I I don't need to yeah do that. No, I don't need to do it at all. Dude. <laughs> I'll do it swim. in the lake though. You know, if you want to go Yo. to Lake Superior, bro. What's that? Lake Superior. It's a, like the biggest Great Lake in America. Lake uh, Superior. Yeah, it's up in um, Michigan. Kind of covers Michigan, Wyoming. But yeah, bro, you go up there, you can see some ship, uh, shipwrecks. Shipwrecks in oh, the yeah. lake? Oh, yeah. Wow, Lots. this sounds like that big lake in Canada that's like an ocean. Even has waves. Oh, yeah. That's Lake Superior. That's scary, bro. <laughs> that's really scary. You sometimes see those videos of those ships in Deadliest Catch that are going through those waves. Oh. And those waves are huge. Huge. Like in the nighttime. That's terrifying, bro. And they're like right eye level at to the wave, you know? Yeah. If you get knocked down. I couldn't be on a ship. I've tried to be on a boat. Mm -hmm. I get so seasick. I can't do it. I mean, like, the last time I was on a boat was maybe last year. Mm -hmm. And we went out from Marina del Rey. We went out. And then we eventually turned back. But by the time we turned back, I already knew I was going to throw up. Ooh. I already knew something was coming, bro. Uh -oh. And then I saw, like, how far we had to go. And I just looked into the distance. <laughs> it was going back and forth like this. And I was like, yo, it's a far way away, bro. Like when the, you see the piers like all the way down there. And I couldn't. It wasn't a case where like I, I needed to impress that day. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be seen as weak <laughs> on the boat, bro. I don't know how my ancestors went across the boat, bro. <laughs> because I don't have that blood in me, bro. That sea, that sea, yo, dude. I don't have sea legs. And then they want to eat lunch on the boat. So they have sandwiches to eat. So now you have to also eat on the boat. Yo. And then... And then one of them had a dog and the dog threw up on the boat, which is why I think I suddenly got it in me like, yo, <laughs> may we make it back? May I touch dry land again? And may this be the last time in a long time that my ass is floating out in the ocean somewhere, bro. Oh, yeah. Damn. So you wouldn't be a yacht guy. No, never. I don't, I, I don't think I would ever buy a boat. Yeah. Yeah. They say like the best days of uh, being a bone owner. Is when you first buy it, and then when you, when you sell it. <laughs> Sounds like our relationship, Tim. I think the best day of our friendship was when I first met you, and I think the next best day, Tim, be when I get rid of your ass, bro. I'm gonna take you out to like, the ocean, boom. dude. Damn, dude. Cold, dark. That'll be a good day, bro. <laughs> Yo, so LA Safari, bro. You can go down the LA River. I'm telling you, dude. I think it would be so awesome if we got dressed up in safari clothes. Oh man. We need to like get like like a boor, bro. I'll dress like a boor, bro, in my khakis, bro. Like wear my long khaki socks and my <laughs> my red leather shoes, bro. And you just dress and this is the fit, bro. <laughs> and we go out there and we just like make a documentary about LA as if it's in the wild. We narrate it like David Attenborough. We film it like that. Like we Yo. just we have a whole episode on a dirty pigeon that wanders around there, bro, and just we'll just follow it around. We'll give it a name. Maybe we'll call it Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's a I'm reason so with that. There's a reason I'm calling it Mark, by the way, is because we were walking down the road <laughs> last night and this guy was like, try it was a poor dog, bro. The dog just needed to go like do some business in the backyard. But for whatever reason, the dog was really pissing off the owner. He was like, Mark! <laughs> no, Mark! Mark, stop it! Come back, Mark! Mark! <laughs> <laughs> For example, the things you see in LA. You just let your dog just go out and relieve itself. You hate to see it. There's nothing worse than relieving yourself under pressure. <laughs>
<laughs> I need some water after that, bro. <laughs> Spring back flashbacks, bro. Spring back flashbacks, bro. I'm getting hot and sweaty over here, dude. Damn. It's hot, hot on the safari, dude. We could go see so many places. Obviously, okay, well, the East will be an episode on its own, but Hollywood could be an episode. We could do one on, um, what's Melrose, bro? We could do on Santa Monica. We can do one on, we can go all the spots, bro. Man, you can't go to Skid Row, apparently. Mm -mm. I'm not welcome there. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was shooting the intro for all Wait, flights. Wait, you being for real? You're for not real? welcome there? <laughs> yeah, man. What, what were you doing in <laughs> Skid Row, dude? <laughs> well... For, for I thought it was just 4th Street. I didn't know it was Skid Row. <laughs> but you, you just thought it was 4th Street? Damn. I got down there. We were shooting the intro. And we just like, we're just walking through a spot. I had my camera. And this guy just got real pissed. Got off his, got off like the, the stairs. And he just like started walking. He's like, you can't film it. Why are you filming this? <laughs> and I'm like, my camera's not even on. But like, it was kind of the recording though. But yeah, he was really mad. So apparently they don't like people filming down there. No, they don't. So. There's and it's not really the safest spot either. No. So yeah, we could probably skip Skid Row. No, I think we could, we could, we could, we could pass on that, bro. You know? <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of educational YouTube content. One of my favorite YouTube channels mm -hmm. um, is a channel called German in Venice, mm -hmm. and it's this old German dude, and he basically goes around and films LA. But he got really big on YouTube, um, filming like the the homeless situation during 2020 when it just got really crazy when COVID happened. And he was kind of like documenting the conditions and stuff. Mm. But he still goes. He and he rides around on a scooter, and he films with his iPhone. <laughs> wow! And he's a legend. Cool. GIV baby. We're gonna German see him one Vince. day, and if we see him, we're gonna say, Hey, GIV. What's good, bro? Let's go, <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, dude, I Let's see go. it, bro. We could even do it going to the restaurants. Tim Safaris, bro. You ever uh, seen Soft White Underbelly? Oh, that's the same type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. He, like, really gets the stories of Skid Row. Yeah. And it's, like, really, like, you can really understand, like, the struggle mm -hmm. behind it, man. It's, like, you really feel for these people and you, like, hope for the best. Yeah. But, like, the situation out here is, like, pretty serious. No, it's very serious. So, it's very serious. I was trying to have, like, some compassion for the folks, you know. But still being like authentic and what's being shown because mm -hmm. it's it's a part of like LA living. Mm -hmm. As much as you like wanna people wanna like avoid it, it's here. You can't really That's a big part it. of being, yeah. Yeah. It's like you don't you don't expect it because when you see LA on T V, they show you such a small portion of LA. Mm -hmm. I felt the same when I went to Dubai. Mm. Dubai Dubai. Yeah. I because I stayed in we went we were going to play music in China. Wow. Yeah, and we stopped at Dubai on the way, and then we we got to spend two days in Dubai. But we stayed there's old Dubai and new Dubai. There's like an old part of the city where we stayed, and it's like you wouldn't even you've never seen it. At least coming from South Africa, excuse our ignorance, you know. But it's like we see my perspective of LA was what I saw on TV my whole life, like watching all the shows and all the music stuff that was in LA. But that's West Hollywood, really. And one street in Hollywood, like uh, uh, Gower Street, you know? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> the palm trees and the, yeah. the, the nice sunny blue and yeah. But it's not like, LA is so gigantic. Just look at it on a map. It's terrifying. When you fly into Los Angeles, you fly over lost, like the city yeah. for such a long time. You just fly over a city for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. It's just city. It's like, wow. Then you land at the airport. And then you got to drive another hour just to get through just, just to get <laughs> like, to like the middle mm -hmm. and then there's the valley yeah and then that goes west keep stretching and then you go east we're just east of downtown mm -hmm. but that stretches all the way out to anaheim i mean like it's san bernardino mm -hmm. it just keeps going it hits the mountains yeah <laughs> and then you get the, yeah Gigantic place, intimidatingly big when you first moved to LA. Mm -hmm. I'd never been in such a big city before. Yeah. Yeah. And then having experienced LAX. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the traffic. Just the like people. GTA, too. That airport looks just like GTA. You come, you go around, you go around in the circle like that. Oh, <laughs> LAX is terrible. My least favorite American airport is um, JFK. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I had such a terrible yeah. experience at JFK once. It ruined my traveling experience to JFK. In fact, I avoid it at all costs. 
<laughs> you won't find me going into JFK if I don't need to go to JFK, bro. Yo, because I was once in a line. You see, when you come into America as an immigrant, you can't take the quick line. Like they they have their own line like for the you. Customs line. Yeah, you got to go another way. And so I was waiting in New York to go through customs, and we were standing in this line, and they had two entrances like this. So they would tell people to go this way, tell people to go this way, tell people to go this way, right? And then you to kind of keep the flow going. Mm -hmm. So I stood there for about 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Then they finally let me into one of these lines. Then they decided to open up the middle totally and let all the people behind us in. And we all suddenly stood in the line after an hour and they just let everyone behind us go in front of us and they opened up another lane. Wow. And I was like, bro. I'll be so pissed right there. I was so upset. <sighs> Like just like, after flying f- for 24 hours, you know, 20 hours, bro. And it's, I guess it's not, you know, it's just, I'm just being dramatic, but still, bro, how dare they let those people in before us, bro. <laughs> right? We had to <laughs> stand people? in that line, bro. We got rushed around and it's scary when you land in America, bro. Yo, yeah. Yeah. When you go the, the, the other way, yo, those police are intimidating, bro. Oh yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a solemn right? place, bro. You walk yeah. into this big marble room, you look around, you're like, yo. <laughs> We've made it to America, but we're not in yet. We're not all the way through. We still have this last little barrier to meet. <laughs> then we get in the line, and then we quickly polish ourselves up because we want to look presentable when we get there. <laughs> we're like, yes, officer. Ah, yes. Hi. Good afternoon, officer. Here's my here's my documents. You know, look you up and down as you want. <laughs> and then they give you your thing back, and they say, "Do you stay?" And then you go. <laughs> My guy, we're good. Yo, that's a deep, that's a deep breath, that's a deep sigh you take after that one, bro. Yo, you know, like when something crazy happens and you go outside and you just, <sighs> but then you don't want to do that either because now you're thinking like, what if they see me do this? They hear it. <laughs> they're gonna be watching me. And they're gonna see that I'm, I'm looking anxious now. What are they gonna think? <laughs> now I'm looking around like this. Scared. Big brother is always watching. So. No, you look around, big brother's watching. Then you see the dogs. I'm like, yo. And you know, like, obviously, like, you don't, there's nothing that you have or that, you know, you don't miss. You know, it's like, but you can't help but feel like, yo, but what if the dog decides to come my direction? What now? What must I do? <laughs> Straight face, same thing. They walk up. Uh huh. You see the dog. See the officer smile. They walk past. <laughs> <laughs> I see the dog take uh, five steps this way, walk that way, no eye contact. No, you don't walk the other way. You don't change <laughs> you your course going. of direction. You keep walking straight, bro. That's where you messed up already. You see, you did a little this. You want to zigzag around here. You hate to see it. That, dude. Dog, that dog is intimidating. <laughs> he leaves like no slack in the line. He's just right there. Oh, bro. Or they're like right next to his leg, staring you down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but you love, this way. You, lo- you love to see it though too bro <laughs> you love to see it like they need Absolutely. to do that bro you they know do. it's like but it's just yo hey the intimidating part of it though yeah Oof. i've learned that i had a scare in hollywood the other night i used to go out in that hollywood area all the time I, when i first moved to la i lived right um on yucca street in hollywood really close to where Capitol records is and where my favorite record store is um but since I moved here, yeah, it's like 40 minutes, 30 minutes away now, you know? So I don't yep. really venture out that that side unless I have, I have to. But I was in Hollywood the other night, and it was actually pretty pretty eerie here. Ooh. Felt pretty eerie. I used to wander those streets, you know? It's like I know the area. I've always known it's an eerie area, you know? Eerie in what ways? It's just that place at night is just a very scary part of town to walk around by yourself. Yeah. It's very, like, just it's not it's not very well lit. It's like, I know because I live there that there's just a lot of people that are just mentally unwell. Mm-hmm. You know, there's also a lot of crime in the area. There's just a lot of crazy s- going on there, bro. Yeah. At nighttime. And I would just, I went on the walk and I was walking and I had such a scare, bro. There were these two dudes in front of me and they both looked back at me. Walking down one of those streets and I suddenly thought to myself, because I, I feel, because I come from South Africa, I've always been a little paranoid. Yeah, because we've just grew up our whole lives like being taught and, and prepared to be paranoid about like our surroundings and where we are, you know. 
And I know sometimes, like, when people look at you, you mm -hmm. get the feeling. There's, like, sometimes you get the stomach feeling that, like, yo, this isn't... This isn't a good look, bro. But at, at, in that moment, you can't really just, like... It's, there's this weird intersection in your mind where you think, okay, well, do I turn around? Or do I just, just straighten up, look confident, and just walk? Yeah. And in that moment, I just decided to walk and look confident. And then they both stopped, looked back at me, and I just walked. Five steps later. <sighs> <laughs> because you don't know, those two people could be looking behind, you like, yeah. what's this dude doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so then it's, like, it's, it's like, what do you do? Like, is it really worth your life to fight someone? Or like, yeah, I don't think no, it is, you know? It's not. It's not. I don't. But I do but think your body language... That's something I learned living in LA when I moved to LA. Mm -hmm. Be when I used to walk around in 2020, yo, bro, I was so scared, viscerally scared. I, I can remember it. Like, I it was terrifying. Oh, yeah. But you realize that you, ha you have to walk around and present in a way that you know where you are. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a skill you learn how to do that you develop that you just, when you're in a new place and you don't know where you are, you just present in a confident way. Yep. Because you can tell people's body language when they feel like insecure or intimidated. And I think that those are the type of people that like get taken out, you know, like if they, because you don't look like you're familiar with the area or you don't look like you know where you're going mm -hmm. or you, it's like, you're not walking with a purpose. Whenever I walk anywhere in LA, even if I don't know where I am, I walk with like a purpose. That's the way. And That's I the way. look like I know where I am, even if I don't. It's like, I'm just trying to go to that place right here yeah. and turn left. Yeah. Or <laughs> right or whatever. Um, yeah. Just just act like you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Just be you. <laughs> I had Spicy out. I took Spicy out to Hollywood. Hollywood. Yo, he was a little scared. Bro. He said to me, he's like, all right, I don't know if we should be doing this, bro. Don't you want to do like call us an Uber? <laughs> oh, man. I was like, Spicy, I wanted you I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see what I experienced in this town, bro. <laughs> Have a little taste, boy. <laughs> All yeah. these people disrespect me. Oh, man, that's a mean thing to do. No, take them out to Hollywood on the first... What do you mean? <laughs> that, was my, street that was my experience of LA, bro. <laughs> Could uh, be like, yeah, let's go to, let's go to Sunset. <laughs> the first time I came to, um, to LA was through my college, and I got to come and help with the auditions Ooh. at uh, Sunset Sound or something. Oh, Sunset Sound. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not. No, that's a recording studio, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a... Ah, oh, it's something else. It's like a practice re rehearsal space. Oh. Uh, I forget uh, the name. Or it's like three letters that are the name. Amp? Something. I don't know. Hmm. But we were we were there and we stayed. As you go towards the Hollywood Bowl, yep. there's a Holiday Inn on the left-hand side as you're driving up. I stayed at that Holiday Inn. And I went on an adventure, my first night in LA. I decided that I was gonna have this superhero Los Angeles story <laughs> that never came true. You know, you have to try, you never hey, know. If you could see it. <laughs> so I, I walked from there all the way to Capitol Records. Dang. Where I would later like live for a period, you know, which is pretty full circle. Yeah. But I walked there by myself that night. This is pre-COVID. LA was still happening. I walked on Hollywood Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Walked all the way to the Capitol Records with my laptop. I was going to show somebody this music I'd been working on. And I went and I stood by the gate <laughs> by myself. Look. Wow. What an idiot. I mean, she's bro. I could have gotten taken out alive there, wow. bro. You, you hate to see it. I called my dad. And I was like, Dad, you wouldn't believe where I am right now. <laughs> I'm outside Capitol Records and I'm going to meet some. I'm going to show them my sh bro. And I'm going to be the next John Mayer. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Did anybody hey, even come down? Be a dream maker. <laughs> be a dream maker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, bro, as I'm talking to my dad, this Cadillac pulls up, bro. Black oh, windows. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm like, Dad, believe it. Like, it's happening. Like, someone's here. But they probably just saw me standing there. And they were like, look at this 
tweaker standing on the sidewalk <laughs> like i'm not gonna get out of my car like this guy's gonna this guy's gonna stab me with a broken off bottle bro <laughs> in exchange for like a ring bro you know like <laughs> so they didn't get out the car and then i realized that i was just defeated and i walked home bro I walked back oh. to the hotel but it was a legendary uh you made it happen though. my first night in la ever <laughs> that was my first night in la hey <laughs> you make it happen though. Tim, your phone is making all kinds of noise here, bro. You don't even oh, have man. the decency to put your phone on silent, bro. <laughs> Who? You hate to see it, bro. You know, now these people have to hear all these things just like me, bro. <laughs> Please apologize to them, Tim. <clears throat> here we are trying to run a professional program and we can't even turn our cell phones off, bro. Hey, it was, it was supposed to be under the, the silent seat. We need Siri to be on her stuff. Oh, so Come it's, on, Siri. it's Siri's fault? Yeah. Damn. I'm we'll calling you all stereo now, dude. But on behalf of Siri, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Can I tell you what my dad did once? What's that? We had a friend come and stay for the holiday, and my, my friend was about to leave. So the last morning, my dad, in his way, you know, my dad likes making speeches. Mm-hmm when people come stay it's just something he does you know <laughs> to say thank you and he says at the end he says, looks this guy in the eye and he's like you know sometimes you meet people that are just such a tremendous blessing in, in your life and these people have the ability to just change the trajectory of you and the way you think and I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank myself for being here with you guys this holiday <laughs> bro, this guy teared up, bro. Wow. You're so bummed, bro. You saw a tear build up in this guy's eye, bro. Probably the nicest thing anyone ever said about him, you know? This guy was like, yo, no one, no one is, not even my own dad has said something this night. Even I was sitting there being like, yo, dad, you, man, you've never said anything like that about me before. Like, you're talking to this guy like he's your blood. Like, what about me? Wow. But no, my dad was talking about himself. <laughs> so, if you ever we I wonder where I get it from, <laughs> that's where, bro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate switch, bro. <laughs> classic, bro. Classic, classic, classic. Johnny Hurricane. Wow, the legendary. Yeah. Mm. But I had the pleasure of meeting this guy. Wonderful, wonderful experience. Very, <laughs> uh, very awesome guy. Yeah, we cooked some steaks. We had a braai. Yes. I couldn't believe that he was all the way out in Los Angeles. After such a long time, he was in Los Angeles in 1968. Mm. At the height of rock and roll. Oof. Must have been a crazy time in the 1968. The story definitely has. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, he, he, he was only here for two weeks. <laughs> Hey, but he talks about it like he was here for a while, you know. I always would like send him pictures and stuff, and then I brought him here, and I realized it's like, Dad, you have for like two weeks. <laughs> it's like I've been in places for two weeks before, and I don't know anything about the place. But the way you talk about your time here, you know a lot about LA. But like, what? He had to go and do some some dodgy business meetings there in the valley, you know. Yeah. Find out all about these the Hollywood types, bro. Yeah, it gets wild out there. That's the first thing he said to me when he when he got when he got in the car. He's like, "This place is so mean." He's like, "These people don't even look at you." I was like, "Oh, Dad, welcome to LA, baby. <laughs> I see you." <laughs> Everybody's busy, man. We got got things to do, I guess. We did all sorts of stuff, though. I mean, like we I took my dad to the record store in Hollywood, and even he, yo, he he had a little scare there. I haven't seen him walk that fast in a long time. Let's put it, put it that way, bro. Put on the jets. This, this dude's been faking a limp for a long time because, like, suddenly, out of nowhere, those legs were moving, boy. Oh, man. Yo, this limp has been faked. Makes me wonder. I mean, Fred Samford, you know what I mean? Perfect Fred Samford scenario here. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Johnny Hurricane. And Johnny Hurricane is the first person I watched Samford and Sons with. Wow. Yeah, Legend. Yeah, bro. So what are you thinking about at 28? Ah, dude, I'm just living in limbo right now for the next month. Hey. <laughs> I think I don't even know what to think. I really want to have a great year. I feel like I'm ready for the next thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not a kid anymore. I'm yes. tired of, of 
being a kid, I don't really want to be a kid anymore. I kind of want to grow up and just just become a man that I'm proud of. Mm. You know, I want like, if I were to look at me from the outside, I want to be somebody that five years ago me would just look at and be like, yeah, that's what I want. So I want to put things in place to just become that person. Yeah. Dang. That's it. That's it. Start to be more future forward. No, I have to be. I mean, I'm not necessarily um, driven yet for like marriage or or, or kids anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But it's like, um, I definitely want to position myself in a place where if I do decide to do that, that is a feasible option for me. Yes. Absolutely. But I want to be in a position in my own life where I can do that. That I'm actually ready for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to be honest with myself and that I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. And I probably won't be for a little while. Mm-hmm. Because it's just the situation of of being an immigrant in America and me trying to stay here. It's like my life is set out a little differently. And, you know, it's like until I can actually get to a position where I can freely exist and live my life. I can't it's irresponsible of me almost to myself and to somebody else because I'm just not ready. And like, we're, we're trying to start our own thing too, which also means that we have to be very devoted to it and be in a relationship with, the, with that thing and this work we need to put in and the time. And it's not like we're just going to a job and being on salary and stuff, you know, that's yeah. not an option for me on my, on my, on my visa, you know? So it's like, to, I don't I don't have security like that I guess that's real and I can't offer somebody security at this stage of my life I can't even offer myself security because mm. I don't know what the future is you know it's like so it's a tricky it's a weird place to have gotten to see that's that stack bro yeah that's life right there's <laughs> so much more to think about the older you get yeah so much more to consider so many different paths and things and things um but yeah, bro. Especially something like marriage. That's a it's mm. a really <laughs> important decision. The most important decision in a man's life, I would say. Mm-hmm. Who you marry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the right one can build you up. Mm-hmm. The wrong one could take tear everything, bro. Mm-hmm. Tear your whole life apart. You will tear yourself apart too with the wrong one, man. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but that's it, bro. I, it's just. Um... I need to to just work on the armor and the shield and like I I'm working on my relationship with myself mm-hmm. in a cool way that I've never really done where I'm just being just more at peace and accepting I don't know I feel like I'm starting to love myself again in a cool way mm. which was tough for me a little bit over the past year but now it's like I want to be healthy like I want to get my schedule set like i want to just level up yes for me yes and i don't i think previously it was like i needed somebody else to help me become this version of me but it's like no like i need to become this version of me for me for me yeah and no one can really like help me do that so this year for me is that year bro it's like i want to just work on that putting the clay on the skinny stick man Mm-hmm. I want to just start putting clay on it, on the legs, start building up the armor, you know, yeah. getting the king squared out, bro. It's, it's like you say, analogy. I feel like this, my 30s are going to be an exciting time in my life. I really feel like I'm going to blossom in my 30s. Yes. That's when hopefully <clears throat> I'll, I can get a green card. Like hopefully my business, our business will be up and running. You know, hopefully I would have got some movies, good movies behind me keep yes. on this trajectory. Yes. Like that's the time where I think my career is really going to take off. But I need to be ready for it. Mm-hmm. Do the preparation now. So that's it, bro. That's what my year is about. Building that, that yeah. you of the future, bro. Yeah. Man, and if it means being single for a while or if it means any of this stuff, like, oh, maybe that's just the way it is, you know? Mm-hmm. There's, I hate to say, there's more, well, relationships and friendships are important. And I think, like, if you do find someone that encourages you and, and brings out the best of you, that's a beautiful thing that, like, you need to pursue. Because I think it also allows you to to dig way deeper than you realize you can i feel like when we have kids one day it'll be the similar thing where we suddenly find this new animal inside us that just wants to get out there and provide and then just like keep this 
this going keep this strong. going and like you got to go strong. make some money and you got to go do this and you got to go like you know it's like we 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 just look after ourselves you know so it's like build with this whole thing yeah. that we have like you know, we don't have that urgency of of a much bigger thing at, at stake here where it's like a little human that you're preparing to go out and, and fight the baddies in the world you know it's like absolutely so i w- i would like to experience that feeling I always want to ask my parents, like, what it's like, because I think it must be so challenging to bring up a human being. Like, mm. I think my mom had like, or at least two, maybe two kids when she was 28 already. Oh. I think to myself, like, I drive around, like, you imagine if I had a toddler in this car, because I'm just not there. Like, I would not be able to, but I probably would if, if, if faithfully it so happened that, that someone I was with got pregnant and they decided to keep the child, I would have been forced to figure something out mm-hmm. oh yeah but i think that l- just it's like on the safaris in the wild there just must be some natural thing that happens in your brain that just kicks suddenly and then it's then you, you understand then super you saiyan go. mode now you know yep so i would like to experience that it's a beautiful thing man it's a beautiful thing i would like to experience that this uh whoever young tim or <laughs> young timelina <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man when the time's right when, when the, the time's time right. right i felt like um that was like something i really wanted to focus on um during my 20s was just making sure that i was building for that future um and so like it was important to me to kind of like i don't know be about like everything that you're doing is like for that future self and so would your future self be impacted by having this relationship? Would your future self be impacted um, if you're bringing a kid into the world, but you yourself are not ready for a kid? Like, so it kind of like kept me on the straight and narrow a little bit mm. because I wanted to like make sure like when that time is coming, like I need to be on my stuff, you know, <laughs> to say the least. But yeah, that's what happens, man. You get older and you just start thinking. I think somebody told me, like, life is a marathon, not a sprint. So every day, everything is, like, you're faced with new challenges every time. So just keep going. Uh, and you figure it out. Mm-hmm. When that time is right, you'll know. <laughs> Real talk. I don't know how to end it. <laughs> well, TV, I think that's actually, like, the perfect way to end it. Dream Makers. Yes. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this deep episode where we just got into it but uh, tb thank you so much thank you bro. For being out a day bro yes, sir. thank you for your time thank you guys for watching please check out our, our other videos if you guys haven't checked them out we're gonna be posting hard this year so dream makers don't forget you are the og dream makers the ogs we're gonna come back in a year's time you're gonna love to see it you will always be the ogs yes, yes. so thank you for watching our videos thank you for rocking with us and uh, yeah, dude, I guess I'll see you in the next one, bro. Steph, huh? Yes. You love to see it? Yes. <laughs>